Hi, everyone. It's Candace Craw Goldman from quantumhealers.com. Back again with another great question from one of our YouTube viewers. So this YouTube viewer was watching one of the Get Ready video uh, collection that's on our uh, channel. And what that is, is just like what it says, it's how to get ready for a quantum healing session. Quantum healing session really of any kind, not just BQH, not just QHHT, anything at all like that, that has you entering into your own consciousness to explore. And there's a lot of different ways we can do that these days. This, these get ready videos will help you do just any of those things and even help you with things like um, dream recording, meditation, all that kind of stuff. Get ready, sort of get ready for your session or get ready to begin to explore your own consciousness. There are 10 very brief videos there. Okay, so one of the videos is called Jumpstart Your Imagination. Now, if you have been watching any of my videos for the last, um, well, many years, it's been more than 15 now, you will have heard me say that I believe that imagination is the language of the higher self. And I really do believe that that's true. You have to be able to access your imagination to translate, um, oftentimes, the information downloads that you get from your higher self. So here's the question, and I want to read it to you directly. Now, this person, I don't think, was um, English speaking primarily. And so I reworded and um, sort of switched around and clarified the question. It's not exactly how it was written, but I believe I got it completely uh, correct, the intention of the question. Okay, there's a couple of questions in here, actually. So this person is talking about how it uh, is for somebody who is doing a quantum healing session. And again, commented on the jumpstart your imagination portion of the get ready videos. And this person writes, hi, I thought that seeing a past life was like watching a movie where we don't control any image because the movie has already been recorded. And it's a really interesting way that they phrased it here. You suggested to use your imagination during a session, which by the way, I can do any time. So can you watch the movie without your imagination or do you have to use your imagination to watch a pre-recorded movie? And then in parentheses, they wrote, which I think would make no sense. And you know what? It's a really great way of phrasing this question. It's not a new question. The question's been asked for 15 or more years in my experience, and we've answered it in a lot of different ways. And we're going to do it again this way today. So I thought it was a great way to answer that question. And it also ties into one of the questions that came into our support forum recently about should you have a client, this was a brand new practitioner, should you even take a client who says they can't visualize? And there's a lot of different things about what that word means and um, preconceptions and all of that. So, so let's get to it. When people talk about needing to be able to visualize, and not being able to do a quantum healing session, if you can't manage to visualize, if you're one of the people that can't do that, or if you say you don't understand how it works, I always say this, I know of blind people, I've had them as clients who have perfectly fine and successful and amazing quantum healing sessions. And I'm talking about people who've been blind since birth. So people who cannot visualize, who can only be told what visualization actually is because they can't do it and they ostensibly don't even know what that is. So how did they have a successful past life regression of any kind or quantum healing session? Well, it's because there's not only one way to receive information. And we've gone over this before, but I'll read it to you and I'll put the list up on the screen right now and we can look at this list together. These are the Claire's. Ready? Okay. So there's all kinds of different ways of getting information, right? And in, we talk about this in the BQH class, but here are six ways that you can get information. The number one way that people think about getting information is clairvoyance which is having clear seeing and someone sees through their third eye between his or her two eyes. One sees flashes or images or something like a movie film of what is happening in the past, present, 
or future. And that's kind of why we talk about being able to visualize. We use this phrasing, do you see what I mean? Uh, you know, understanding things visually, but we don't really always mean that's the only way you can get information. We just, in our language system, tend to look at it that way. But clairvoyance really is seeing clearly. People who are clairvoyant sometimes can see apparitions or they actually see things beyond the veil. That's how they get their information. All right. Number two, clairaudience. Having clear hearing, right? Someone who hears information with the mind and not the ears. Basically, it's telepathic information coming into one's mind through their auditory channels, right? Sometimes people will hear this in a regular voice or even sometimes their own voice. Number three, claircognizance, which is having clear knowing. Someone has information or knowledge of something that he or she does not actually know or not apparently supposed to know, right? Thoughts come out of nowhere, apparently, popping into one's mind and give information about something that's either happened in the past or the future that they couldn't know about. That's claircognizance. Clairsentience, that's having clear feeling. Someone who can feel the information within himself or herself. An example of this would be someone having an anxiety attack and the clairsentience person feels this in his or her own chest. A lot of practitioners have a, a great deal of clairsentience with their clients. Another word that is used often is um, empathic, right? You, that you can feel a lot of what's going on with your client or with the person in front of you. Number five, and number five and number six are, are uh, the least spoken about, but it really is still information that comes to you, right? Clairgustance, and that's having clear tasting. Someone that can actually taste something that isn't really there, right? For example, someone tastes chocolate, but he or she is not actually eating any chocolate. And some people are so good at this that especially like with the idea of the body and the mind connection. If you think about biting into a lemon, me just getting ready to say that I have uh, my salivary glands are exploding <laughs> right now because I knew I was going to say that about the lemon, but seeing something too across the room and not being able to taste it or seeing a visual image on uh, in a movie or something like that, and then being able to actually taste it, that's, you know, you know that you've got a little of that if if you have that prompt and you feel like you can taste it in your mouth. And then number six, clear smelling, having um, clear smelling, someone who can smell odors that are not present. Example of that would be to smell perfume or a cigar, but neither of those things are present in that moment. And the person that wrote this because, um, you know, perfume or cigars, because those two things are often spoken about when people are having visitations from somebody who's crossed the veil. Now, it's important to talk about the fact that you don't just get information one way. Some people can get information two, three, four, or all of these ways. Really? And you can practice and they're like little muscles, you know, you could figure out which one are you better at, which one have you not had any contact with, and you can, you can get better just like working a muscle with any of these things, but you may have been born with a particular predilection for one or the other or a couple of them. All right. So the whole idea of how a past life regression works is that you're given the information in a way that we could call a download. And then your own personality, your makeup, the way your brain is wired, the way that you've used your mind since you were born, that your soul contract, all of those things come into play to translate the information from that download into something to allow you to express the experiences that you're having. Okay, so does that make sense? So if a download comes to somebody in a session and they say it was just like a movie, then that person is expressing this through their clairvoyant part of themselves, their clairvoyant aspect of themselves. They are seeing clearly and they've taken that information 
and absolutely do see it something like a movie. Okay. But sometimes it's not very clear, right? Some people are like, well, it's not very clear. I can kind of see a little bit of something. And um, I had a client even just this week that says, well, I know there's people around me, but I can't really see them very clearly. This person was having this experience clairvoyantly, but the, the images were murky. They weren't very clear. The details weren't directly available to her. And so the the way that you use your imagination then is to fill in the details, you know? Using your imagination, you access a part of your your intellect, your experience, and your communication skills to be able to go, but I can imagine the people there were very dusty with dark brown skin and um, loincloths or whatever it was for me in my session that, that happened just a few days ago. So that is how you're accessing your imagination to help assist bring forward Um, the storyline or your experiences that are happening right at that time. Okay. And I think it's important to consider this fact as well. And I'll use my own experience to illustrate it. You might have had a past life regression or quantum healing session where you saw something like a movie. That's what happened to me with Dolores Cannon. It, it, it seemed like a movie. It was a lot of my, I understood that I was downloading and sort of translating the movie, but it was very visual. It was still very visual. And I did see, see this, right? I saw the images here, um, but in a daydreamy kind of way. Okay. Not like a movie behind my eyelids, even, even all those years back then, my first past life regression. Well, maybe my, <laughs> maybe my second, but I digress. Anyway, um, but over the years, my my sessions have have come in different ways. So I've had many opportunities to exchange sessions with other practitioners, and primarily, mine were clairvoyant sessions. I got my information visually and auditorily, some clairsentience and claircognizance, but but very standard uh, vision, hearing and feeling and emotions and all of that. So basically a little bit of all of those things. But something happened once um, many years later into it. It it probably, you know, I probably had 15 or 20, eh, maybe not 20, but in the teens for sure sessions when all of a sudden I had a session where I saw absolutely nothing. I was unable to use my clairvoyance to translate what was happening into being able to talk about what I saw. And it was really interesting because I was actually being given a, um, at the time it was a QHHT session with somebody who's brand new to uh, Dolores's method and had never done a session before, but was doing a session on me. And I said, sure, I'd be happy to be your uh, guinea pig. I was in Arkansas at the time. And uh, this man did a session on me. And when I came off the cloud, I was in a gray soup with nothing coming forth visually, nothing at all. And it was really fascinating because I wasn't used to that. I was used to the the information coming visually. But because I've been doing this so long, because I've been supporting other practitioners for so long, I knew what to tell myself during that time. And it was interesting because I was having the experience as um, the client I was using this as a teaching moment for the practitioner who was doing a session on me at the same time, kind of having a running commentary. So I was compartmentalized um, in two different ways. And I was able to talk to my practitioner in that way and, and even tell him, you know, this is interesting. I'm, I'm really not seeing anything and I'm going to begin to access my other forms of translating what was happening to be able to describe what was happening because I couldn't see anything. And I will have to tell you too, that, um, and some of you have seen this before and I'll try to find the the link for it and put it in this video. But uh, one of my most incredible um, healing, powerful, amazing sessions I ever had in my life was a tandem session with Pamela Erlen, where I saw absolutely nothing, (laughs) absolutely nothing at all. And that session was uh, witnessed by at least a half dozen people, I believe. And it was fascinating. And I had, um, I practically levitated. My bones were, 
bending in my body. And it was one of the most powerful sessions I ever had ever to this day. Um, it is, it has to be at the top of one of the most powerful sessions I have ever had. And there was absolutely no visuals whatsoever. It was all completely somatic. It was all experiential. Um, and it's interesting how that worked. So Pamela and I were both laying down, having a session at the same time. And there was a couple of times when Pamela had to get up and visit um, the restroom during this, this session. When she was gone, I could speak. I could speak. And Dolores Cannon, of course, was part of all of this because we both love Dolores so much. And I could speak for Dolores while Pamela was gone. And when Pamela came back, the voice of Dolores only came through Pamela. Now, there's a lot of different ways of looking at that. And Pamela's um, brainwaves were actually being recorded at the time. And she has some of the most coherent brainwaves of any human <laughs> that there is. Um, certainly nothing like my brainwaves. My brainwaves are very, actually, in their own way, very unique and very, very odd. A um, couple of them are flipped, but... That's a whole nother story. We won't get into that right now. But suffice it to say, this is why you use your imagination. It's to help you download the information, right? So yes, if it's a past life, has it already been, re been recorded? Well, yes. If you are visiting uh, an authentic past life, then yes, it is recorded. And you simply are um, observing and translating what's been given to you in your download in the best way that you can. But to do that, you use your imagination, okay? Because that's the best word we have, right? To access all of these different ways of having the information come through you, including to kind of brighten up and spiffy up your clairvoyance if there are images there, but they're not very clear. You use your imagination to fill in the details. And doing that with an open heart and with real trust in your higher self and your guidance and really jumping in with both feet, it'll happen for you. It really will. It's that hesitation that sometimes uh, makes it hard. And it's the performance anxiety. And it's this idea that you have to do it perfectly and that it's not happening correctly and that it happens to other people, but not you. It's all of those things and all of those judgments that get in the way of you having a fantastic regression experience or quantum healing experience. Okay. Well, I hope that answers the question. Keep the questions coming in. I love to see them. You can send them via email to Candice at quantumhealers.com. You can comment on a video. Sometimes I miss some of those comments, but email is the best. You can ask on the forum if you're a practitioner. Try to catch me on Facebook if I'm there those kinds of places. I'm happy to take questions wherever you could send them. You could even text me. I'm not going to say my phone number, but you can find it pretty, pretty easily on the directory. I thank you so much for tuning into this video. And if you are looking for a quantum healer of any kind, that is a Reiki healer, that is a regressionist, that is a clinical hypnotherapist, if it's somebody who does cranial sacral therapy, or any of the vast numbers of other kinds of energy healing that is available to you, not just quantum healing like BQH or QHHT, please head on over to quantumhealers.com. And if you are any kind of alternative or energy healer who is in service to others, please consider joining our community. We are guru free. We don't promote just one method. We share information across the board and we are very open-minded and loving. All right, that's all for today. Thanks so much. See you next time.